So, Mr. Speaker, we want to welcome folks to the progressive message and uh, let people know that they can always plug into the Progressive Caucus. The, uh, the, the um, email address is stated below. Uh, people, I hope, will communicate. It's very important that we stay in touch and that this is the progressive message. And tonight, you're right, the subject is clean energy, jobs, and our earth. Uh, let's start out with just a few basics. The progressive energy policy, global climate change and green jobs, has to be, be made up of a few essential uh, components. Um, the fact is that U.S. energy policy is everyone's business. U.S. energy policy touches nearly every aspect of American life, our homes, our natural environment, and most importantly, our economy and the earth itself. Last year, Americans spent $400 billion buying oil outside the United States. This is a tremendous expenditure on our economy and sends dollars outside of our economy. And that means that last year, American families spent about $3,000 a piece each on fossil fuels that contribute to the disastrous changes in our global climate. I think it's important to, to point out that we are here now, we're approaching the first 100 days of the new administration. Haven't been here long, but we have been here strong. There is no doubt that energy policy will be a major component of the next two years, and it's critical to point out that the Democratic Caucus and the Progressive Caucus are here to lead the way on this discussion. You know, I like to stay positive, but we have to make sure we have a, a good record, and the record requires that we revisit some of the things that have been proposed over the last eight years that have not been so good. One, the Republican plan has not been a good plan. Uh, this plan, uh, people contend that efforts to curb greenhouse gas emissions are perilous and will cause undue hardship for Americans in the midst of a recession. The fact is if we don't do something about this global crisis, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, we're all going to be in much more trouble than we're in right now. Right now, in fact, is a good time to deal with uh, the, 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 the crisis of our, in our economy. It's a chance to rebuild. It's a chance to strengthen. It's a time to invest in infrastructure. And I think, uh, um, Chairwoman uh, Woolsey, it's a good time to just point out that it was during the Civil War that Abraham Lincoln made the decision we're going to have a railroad go all the way, span the United States. It was during the, um, it was during the time, the, the 1930s the Depression, that uh, we saw rural electrification be a major commitment to, of the, of the uh, United States government under Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It was under Eisenhower, a recession, where we talked about the interstate highway uh, uh, system that we now enjoy today. In fact, in times like this, it's no time to shrink, no time to be afraid, but it's a time to be bold. Let's not go for any naysayers or fear mongers. Let's move forward. And it is our appreciation and gratitude for this uh, beautiful earth that we live on that drives our dedication. We're not really here from the Progressive Caucus talking about what we're against. We are talking about what we're for. Right. And we are for a clean earth in which everyone can breathe, can drink, can live, and enjoy this wonderful planet we have, and not just human beings, but all creation. And I think it's very important that you set us on the right trajectory for that. And I think that as we are looking back and remembering the 29th anniversary of Earth Day, it's important to remember that the course of action we've been following has not been one that's been helpful. In fact, it's brought us to a very difficult situation. We've seen the energy plan over the last eight years essentially be made up of tax breaks for oil companies, J drill, drill, drill. Remember, remember that one? Uh, I remember that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, they, we, you better believe we heard that one, which resulted in more pollution, uh, which uh, taxpayers have to clean up, and no fundamental investment in a green energy economy like the investment we've been talking about, the investment in an Earth Day to commemorate and de rededicate our, our commitment, the investment in our economy over, over the centuries, as it, when progressive leaders like Lincoln and FDR uh, uh, made those important investments I referred to a moment ago. Um, 
No investment in a green energy economy that will lessen our dependence on oil and reduce global climate change and perhaps most importantly, create jobs. You know, Earth Day. Earth Day is a wonderful time to have this conversation uh, about American clean energy jobs because Earth Day is not simply about fighting pollution. It's also about enhancing our natural world and our existence in it. It's about development along the lines that are smart and green, clean, and renewable. We can do both. I will say that um, I do appreciate uh, some of our Republican colleagues, and I respect them all and enjoy them a lot, but I think it's important to point out that their vision was on display on Sunday morning talk when uh, the, um, the, uh, the, one of the Republican leaders said that, that he dismissed as, quote, almost comical, mm -hmm. the idea that carbon dioxide is a carcinogen that it's harmful to our environment. And uh, the proof and evidence was that, you know, that carbon dioxide must be safe because humans exhale it and cows deposit it. Well, that is not the definition of whether it's a carcinogen or a harmful substance. Of course, we do have a science gap, and we can do an hour on that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to, import, to, to just point out that we are not only on Earth Day and commemoration of Earth Day talking about fighting pollution. We're talking about enhancing our world our green planet, the one that we, uh, the only one we have, by the way. And again, as you know very well, uh, uh, the gentlelady from, uh, from California knows, our, co our chair of the Progressive Caucus, that if we acidify our oceans and if we overheat our planet, the planet will still continue to exist. We just won't be able to live on it. So that's very important to point out. And I think that the progressive plan, and I want to just hand it back to the gentlelady right now, to talk about the importance of a progressive vision for energy policy. And get well, uh, gentlelady uh, yields back. Let me say that part of a progressive vision is to implement provisions of a renewable electricity standard, which will create over 300,000 jobs, implement an energy efficient resource standard so we can get energy savings to create over 222,000 jobs, new jobs by 2020. By cutting waste, we save money. The renewable electricity standard alone will result in nearly $100 billion in savings for consumers and businesses by 2030. Efficiency savings. The energy efficiency resource standard will result in nearly 170 billion jobs in utility bill savings by 2020. Opponents of that change uh, that Americans are demanding uh, are, are not going to be the ones who, who are remembered fondly by, by history. The ones who op oppose efficiency and elect renewable energy, these are the same folks who are in danger of directing U.S. energy policy. They've ignored global, global climate change, as you and I have talked about. They've ignored acidifications of the o ocean, overheating of our planet. They've widened tax loopholes for our polluting industry. And they've made marginal advances and minimal advances in new clean energy techniques. Madam Speaker, will the American public, the will of the American public is being represented in Congress and the White House now, and we need the American people to continue to demand responsible energy policy, climate change policy that creates jobs and cannot be outsourced. As the gentlelady from California, Lynn Woolsey, was just talking about, somebody will come up with the great ideas to green our world. Will they be here? Only if we make the proper investments. Only if we become and maintain our position as innovator. And I yield back to the gentlelady.